So in this video, we're going to give you all the tools you need to get started with Docker. So Docker at its most basic level is a framework that allows us to take our applications and bundle them into reusable containers that can run on any system and that are isolated from other processes running on that system. So what does that mean? So we have an operating system like Linux that's running on our device. And on top of that operating system, we have a number of running processes and we have a number of files stored in that device's file system. When we're using our computer, we're creating a lot of processes and each one of those processes is going to use the some shared storage in our machine. A container is an isolated box that contains whatever processes we want it to contain, along with its own segment of storage that's isolated from everything else. This means that things that are inside Docker containers can't access things outside Docker containers, and things outside of Docker containers can't access things inside of Docker containers. So when we're using Docker, we'll generally start with a Docker file. So this is essentially a script that contains all of the dependencies that we need, the installation for our project, and any configurations that we might have for our project or its dependencies. When we run Docker build, Docker will execute everything in that script and bundle it along with our code and generate an image that contains everything we need to run our code. Once we have that image, we can deploy that to any device, including our development machine that we're working on, our production server that's hosting our project, or any cloud environment that manages these Docker containers for us. And that brings us to the first really great thing about using Docker, and that's that these images that we create are super portable. Any person on a development team with their own development machine, with their own dependencies and operating system, can load up our Docker image, run Docker Docker run, and then have the exact same container that everyone else on the team has. We no longer have to worry about hard to solve bugs because of somebody saying, well, it works on my machine. Similarly, when we deploy this to production, we know that we have the exact same container running in production as we have on our development machine. So this can stop a lot of the bugs that we have when deploying. Another great thing about Docker is that we can version our Docker file along with our code base. So our Docker file contains all the dependencies and configurations that we need. And assuming that we version these, for example, in Git together, we can make sure that any version of our code base has the correct versions of these dependencies and configurations as well. Docker containers are often compared to virtual machines, which run an entire operating system for every app that we deploy. Virtual machines have some similar advantages to Docker containers, but every time we deploy an app, we have to include that entire OS, and that introduces a lot of overhead in terms of system resources. Docker containers, on the other hand, share the OS of the host machine with every running container. And this means that there's very little overhead to spinning up a new container, even though these containers are still isolated from one another. This isolation is another really important benefit of Docker, and it's especially useful in production when we want to make sure that different apps that we deploy aren't interfering with each other. So here's the general workflow that we have when we're using Docker. First, we create a Docker file inside our project. That's essentially the script that Docker will use for creating our image. Then we run a command to generate the image, and that image contains the entire file system for our container and all the configuration that we need to run our project. Once we have that image, we can push that image to a container registry. And a container registry is essentially a server that holds these container images, and they can be pulled later on other machines. Then we can pull our image from our container registry, run that image, and we end up with a running container that's an isolated instance of your running code for your project. So let's take a look at an example. So on my screen here, we can see that I have a very simple Flask app that simply returns hello world anytime that we make an HTTP request. Now I don't want all the developers working on this project to have to install Python and Flask on their local computer. So I've created a Docker file that isolates all of these dependencies and the project itself into a container. So the first line of this Docker file is specifying that I want to use the Python 3.10 image from Docker Hub. Docker Hub is Docker's own container registry, and Python is the name of an image on Docker Hub that contains Python already installed. Next, we can see that I'm copying the, all of the data in my current directory, including this app.py and my requirements file, into the image, and then I'm running pip install to install Flask in the container. Once everything's set up, I'm specifying that I want the container to run the flask run command to start the server when I start that container. Now that I have this Docker file, I can run the docker build command, and this will run everything that I've specified in my docker file, including installing the dependencies and copying my code into the container image. Once this is done, I can run the docker images command, and this will show me the image that I've created for this project. Once that image exists, I can use the docker run command to create a container from that image that'll run my code. We can see that my Flask app is now successfully running inside the container, and if I make an HTTP request, I can see that everything's working as expected. If I run the docker ps command, I can see that I have this container running, and I can see that it's based on that image that I created earlier. It's even possible to use Docker to run a shell inside our container, and I'm able to use all the standard Linux commands to see everything that's going on inside of my container. Now, if I wanted to deploy this application to production, because everything's in a Docker image, this would be super easy. All I'd have to do is push my container to a container registry, and then pull that container onto my infrastructure to run it. Even in this simple example, I don't have to worry about what version of Python is installed on the machine, or whether or not Flask is installed with pip. Everything is isolated into this reproducible container that I can deploy deploy wherever.
wherever I want. If you enjoyed that video, you can get a lot more content just like this on interviewpan.com. We publish two to four videos a week. Really, it's just an arbitrary number. It's whenever I can sit down and do a video because these videos take a whole day to do. And we're always online to answer any questions you may have. Join our Discord, join our newsletter, The Blueprint, where you can get more weekly data structure and algorithm and system design kind of topics. And subscribe and like this video if you actually like this video and it helped you. And also tell a friend that we exist. That's all.